Hello, and welcome to Energy Miser's Kitchen Dish Sanitizer Machine Training. I'm Billy Burkelhammer with Energy Miser. It's my pleasure to be here with Eric, the chef from Guilford House. Hey, how's it going? And thank you, Cindy, for filming the video. Okay. So, uh, in this video, we're going to show you the things that Energy Miser provides from a proactive maintenance standpoint to help you at ALG Senior stay a step of the health inspector. These are also things that you can perform on a daily basis as far as routine maintenance. This is your dish sanitizing machine. And if you'll notice, I did not call it a dishwasher. Is your dishwasher here? No. Who's your dishwasher? <laughs> You're the dishwasher. Eric's the dishwasher. So uh, this is your spray, a spray uh, nozzle here for prepping your plates and silverware and anything that's going to go into the dish sanitizing machine. You want to make sure that this is working really good. Energy Monster provides this piece of equipment. So if your piece of equipment is not working properly, you can call us 800-627-5634. Our number is plastered on all of our pieces of equipment. So if you have any questions, there are no dumb ones, we implore you to give us a call. So how does your dish machine work? Well, first of all, raise the door and let me show you what I look for when we come in. Cindy, can you come in here and uh, kind of show what I'm looking at? I'm looking at this spray arm on the bottom and there's a nut right here on the end of the spray arm. I'm going to check and make sure that that nut is tight. There's one on each end of the spray arm. Here's another one right here. Now you can see you have three to four jets on each of your spray arms. There's a spray arm at the bottom and there's another spray arm at the top. You don't have to show this one, Cindy, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm checking those nuts on the end to make sure that they're tight. About once a week or so, you should take this spray arm off, and you do that by these two set screws right here. There's two set screws. You unscrew both of them about two revolutions, and the spray arm comes all the way off. And here is the screw, or the yeah, the screw that I was telling you about. And you can use this right here as a screwdriver and you simply unscrew it. Here's a brush to be able to clean inside your spray arm to make sure that you got all those ports clean. Eggshells, lemon seeds, who knows what goes in there that might clog up the performance of your dish machine. So first things first, everything that I'm telling you, I won't say everything, but the majority of the basics are written on the wheelhouse of the machine. I'll show you that in a second. So if we slip that back on there, we're just going to tighten it up. And there you have it. Now, that's the first two things I'm going to check. Now, when I shut this machine, it's going to start. You're going to notice that the first wheel that turns is your detergent bucket. And you'll see the detergent coming in right here. You see that, Eric? Yeah. So your detergent's coming in. Now, the machine is working. These are the three chemicals that operate the dish machine sanitation. The red chemical is the detergent, and it's the first one that goes in. Cindy, can you pan over here and look at the color of the lines? Everything's color coordinated in Energy Miser's world. This is a red line going to the red detergent. And by the way, we dyed that detergent red. You gotta be very careful when you're dealing with these chemicals. You wanna wear gloves, you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that not only do you wear gloves, but you wear goggles, and uh, just treat these chemicals with respect, especially that red one. If it gets on your skin, cold water and soap, uh, as well as white vinegar can help you. Now you'll see that the drain is activated and now it's filling back up. You gotta make sure that you have at least 120 degrees temperature and there's the chlorine wheel spinning and the free rinse wheel spinning and you can see the chemicals coming in right here. All right, so make sure you have chemicals in the bucket, make sure that you have the right color line going to the right color chemical and then make sure that you actually see the chemicals going into your machine. When it's finished, you'll have the litmus strips to be able to prove how many parts per million of chlorine are going into your machine. And when it's done, simply take a test strip out. We'll wait for it to finish. We're gonna check it and prove it right here. All you do is just stick it in. Cindy, can you come over here and show it a little close up? Oh, let me hold it the right way. So uh, you can see this is well, well in, within the standards for the health department. So they're gonna be happy. Let me give you these back. I know you keep those in a special place. All right, let's go to the uh, mopping of the floor. closet within the kitchen and this is the dispenser 
for the Mark I degreaser. Energy Miser has been in business since 1966, and this was our very first product, the Mark I degreaser. Everything from Energy Miser is super duty. I'll give you an example. The chlorine on your dish machine is 15% chlorine. When you go to the store and you buy Clorox bleach, it's only 3%. So my five gallon bucket is like 25 gallons of chlorine. All of our products are like that. All of my laundry products, all of the housekeeping chemical cleaning solution products, as well as all the kitchen cleaning solution products. So make sure that everything is uh, you know, operating correctly. And if you have any questions, there are no dumb questions, please call us. We're the good guys. We don't charge to come out. We're truly your partner. And I'm very happy to be showing you the best practices of things that we do that will help you guys do the best practices that you can. So in order to operate uh, this chemical, you want to make sure that your pickup line, this is your chemical pickup line, make sure that that goes all the way into the bucket, and then this is what goes in your mop bucket, and you simply hit this button right here, and everything is mixed and calibrated correctly for you. Now, this Mark I degreaser is a floor stripper. Show, show the floors in here. So these are terracotta floors. These are terracotta floors that are meant for that stripper, that degreaser, if you will. Don't use that anywhere else in the house. If it gets on your LVP floors or your BCT floors, it will ruin those floors. So it's only for the kitchen, all right? Uh, let's go back over here to show you the two other chemicals in your house, in the kitchen. This is your Pan Plus detergent for the three compartment sink. Now, in order to run this, you obviously want to turn your water on, and when the red button is pushed in, it's providing soap. We'll turn it off. I'm not going to tell you how to run your house, Eric, because every three compartment sink is, is different. But I will tell you this, you don't need to run the soap the whole time. So it might be five seconds or 55 seconds that you use to fill up your sink, but you don't need to just turn on or walk away. Uh, you'll get a feel for what's appropriate for, for your house. This is your quat sanitizer. And again, you're going, to take, uh, you're going to take your three compartment sink, fill it up to the fill line, and then you want two squirts on this mechanical hand pump. It might take you three or four to get it primed up. Look, there's my first squirt. I had to prime it up. So it took me about four or five to get the chemical up to the pump, but about two squirts, fill the sink up, and then here are your litmus strips for your quad sanitizer. And again, if I had water in here, we'd proof it, and you can read the parts per million on, on the side right there. Uh, the next thing I will share with you is in order to clean any food prep areas or any dining room tables or dining room chairs or anywhere we have food, you fill up the sink, use your two squirts, uh, litmus test proof it to make sure it's the right part per million, and then take your spray bottles and fill them up by dunking them in the three compartment sink. If you were to put this in a quart size spray bottle, it'd be way too stiff and it can make things sticky or not appropriately disinfectant as needed. All right. Uh, Eric, any questions? No. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, laundry then. Thank you so much.